No, that oh, one's I hate solid. that one. No, I hate it. I get how it can be annoying, though. I think it comes from when I worked in retail over Christmas, and you'd hear it like every, twice an hour, every hour. Retail has ruined so many things in my life. Yeah, me too. Songs included. Yeah. I, I actually don't mind that one. I don't hear it very often. I hear it like once, maybe twice a year. It's just pitch. It's fair. She can cut through you. And it cuts through my soul. I get that. On a very heavy level. You don't like hippopotamuses? No. But hippopotamuses like you too. <laughs> Well, the hippopotamus community can contact me and we can talk it out. All right. Uh, yeah. You heard her, everyone. All you hippopotamuses. I assume that's like 50% cent- 50 of our listenership is hippopotamuses. We're very big in the hippo community. We are. I hate that Paul McCartney uh, wonderful Christmas time. Is that what it's actually called? Simply. Oh, happy. yeah. I am shocked that that is made by a proper musician. Yeah, there's some Christmas music that it's like, okay, but you like actually have like a career. You have like a whole career based on how well you can sing. It seems offbeat. Yeah. It seems when you hear the original version, like somebody drunkenly singing along at karaoke. (laughs) That they like, I think I know the tune, but they don't quite know the tune. And they're like a half beat behind. The entire scene. You don't have to like overdo it. You can just sing it normally and it's going to sound bad. Yeah. I think that is a shitty song. It is a shitty song. And also, I don't like that John Lennon one. The one that's just like a guilt trip Christmas. Oh, the war is over. Yeah. So it's Christmas. And what have you done? What have you done? Huh, Sam? What have you done? What have you done for the world? (laughs) It's just like, fuck you. I'm John Lennon. I hold my sign up and everyone loves me. Everyone forgives that I beat my wife constantly because I'm John Lennon. (laughs) Sounds like you have some feelings towards John Lennon. I do have feelings towards John Lennon. It's just certain people, we forgive all their bad things. And then other people, you're like, oh, you can't listen to that song. Didn't you hear what he did this one time? Right. Yeah, but why why does John Lennon get a pass? True. He's a piece of shit too. Yeah. Like a lot of people. Yeah. But anyways, the Paul McCartney one is just a bad song. And I hear he's made like $15 million just on that song. Ugh. He makes about half a million a year. It's on every single playlist, I think. And it's bad. It's just like him learning how a synthesizer works. That's the whole song. He's like, <laughs> what if I press this button? And that, that is what, what he was doing. It was just oh. trying to learn how synthesizers work. And I don't think he figured it out. <laughs> he's still working on it. Yeah. All right, should we start our podcast? Yeah, that seems like something we should be doing right now. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of I Love This, You Should Too. My name is Indy Randawa, and I'm simply having a wonderful Christmas time. (laughs) And with me is my lovely co-host, who loves hippopotamuses, it's Samantha Randawa, everybody. And we here at I Love This, You Should Too are members of the Alberta Podcast Network, which is locally grown and community supported. So today we have our last Christmas episode of the year. I'm sad that this is it. You just want Christmas all year long. Well, I feel like October gave me unrealistic holiday celebration like guidelines because we did so many halloween episodes it was halloween for a very long time in our house it's been christmas for longer Uh, has it yeah because you started christmas on november 12th but it's not over it's just over for the podcast because we're actually recording this a little bit early and we'll be wrapping up our christmas stuff today next week we will have a special kind of year end wrap up Mm mm-hmm A little best of 2022. (laughs) I'm excited. And today, you know what? Let's just take it easy. Yeah. There's going to be no deep dives. I'm not going to do a lot of um, talk about the formal language of film today. No soliloquies. No. Today, we're going to sit back. We're going to chat about a movie that I loved and have introduced to Samantha, A Christmas Story from 1983. And rather than really get into things like we often do... Maybe we'll just talk about the movie. We'll talk about some stories of our 
own childhood Christmases. Yeah. And we'll have a good time because you're drinking. What are you drinking? I, I think you're very festive, aren't you? Oh, I'm drinking a rum and eggnog with pumpkin pie spice shaken over top. There you go. I'm like super festive. And uh, it's putting me in the spirit because there's only, t- well, on recording day, there's only 10 more days till Christmas. Whoa. Yeah. It is, it is sneaking up on me, actually. I still have to do some shopping. So do I. We should get on that. Yeah, we should. I'm drinking very unfestive green tea. But it's green. That's, you know what? Yeah, it it's is a green. Christmas color. Yeah. Well, before we get into our discussion on a Christmas story, let's thank our first sponsor of the episode, and that is the Alberta Blue Cross. Even if you're a busy business owner with more meetings than hours in a day, you can be calm and collected when your group benefit plan is taken care of by Alberta Blue Cross. Your employees can manage their own health, dental, life, and disability coverage online, anytime, on any device, making it easier for them and for you. To learn more and explore your options, head to ab.bluecross.ca. I read that ad so many times, somebody quoted it to me in the real world (laughs) the other day. (laughs) I love that. That's hilarious that people are starting to quote you back to yourself. I feel like that might happen more often, usually just because I I say ridiculous things out in the real world, Mm -hmm. but usually not from the podcast. (laughs) And also, um, my catchphrase, according to Sean, is, oh, shit. (laughs) Yeah. I guess when I I'm like Sean's right. when I'm legitimately excited about something that you bring up or something from the movie that I'd forgotten, yeah. I, I say that. You do. I've heard you say it. Yeah. Good job, Sean. You have more catchphrases. Do I? Oh, you have so many. Do I? Yeah. What are my catchphrases? Classic. Classic. You know what? I could just tell you one per episode for the next for the rest of the year because I I listen to them so much that right. I I know what you say a lot of. Um. And you end everything with ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Just That's like my that. holiday catchphrase. It is. And anything in the month of October is woo. <laughs> Just like that. But we watched A Christmas Story. It's a movie that I loved and it's kind of in my rotation of steady Christmas movies. And you had never seen it. So your first viewing, Samantha. What did you think of A Christmas Story? I liked it. It was fun. It was cute. I liked it. Can you see this getting into your yearly Christmas rotation? Um, Maybe, yeah. It's definitely one that you could watch like multiple times and not get tired of. Um, just it's got that real like nostalgic Christmas feel um, that kind of reminds you of like being a kid, which I'm sure we'll talk about on this episode. But it just really like brought back the feeling of Christmas as a child. Yeah, I think that is the single best thing about it, in my opinion, because Christmas gets less fun as you get older. It's really hard to capture that same kind of magic. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have kids yourself or you're not spending the day with children, it's different. And there seems to be something like missing from it a lot of the time. And this is a good reminder of that feeling that you used to get, or at least I did. Mm-hmm. Like, I think we're not going to talk too formally about this movie. We can agree that it revolves around nostalgia. And it does do a lot of good technical things to get that across. They have that bit of soft focus look going on. It starts off with the voiceover about somebody looking back at their past. But what I think it does best, rather than trying to capture some idyllic or perhaps non even existent time in American history, is that it does a great job of capturing a very specific time in this child's life. And Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot that so many of us in the Western world who have celebrated Christmas, we can see something in ourselves in that. And we grew up in, of course, very different times than this. But I think there's a lot of this that is really effective across generations. Yeah, that that's like the one thing that stays the same is that like excitement of like a kid on Christmas morning, which is like a saying. Yeah, for good reason. Yeah. I love that it starts out with the line about the entire kid world revolves around Christmas. Oh, absolutely. And that was so true because I remember as a kid, that's how you measure time was Mm -hmm. in Halloween, Christmas and summer vacation. Yeah. That was those are the big three for me. I always remember my mom would say like Christmas is coming if I said like, oh, I want this or like, oh, I need a new of this. My mom would be like, Christmas is coming. And 
it always really annoyed me because technically Christmas is always coming. Um, and that was like her non-committal response to me as like a child who wanted things. And uh, so, but now I, I, it's like nostalgic too. I'm going to start saying coming. that to you more often. Well, Christmas is coming. No. <laughs> hey, could you pass me the salt? Well, Christmas is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Christmas was like the basis of my economy as a child, right? Because that's, that's when you're getting your stuff. I know you were probably a bigger birthday person. Yes, I've always been a big birthday person. Still now, you have like birth month. You really go for it. And <laughs> I, I do. have like I have like a birth weekend. Early evening. A birth early evening. Yeah. No. We... I need like an hour or two. That's no. about it. So we get introduced to the main drive of the story very very early on and Ralphie wants this BB gun and I love him giving hints about what he wants cutting them out and yeah. hiding them around the house and we get the refrain of you'll shoot your eye out kid right, right off the beginning as well and we're going to hear that a lot that's a good catchphrase that I love coming up over and over again that's a fun like of course that's such an adult thing to say to a kid yeah. about something like that and I think that this is something that is very of a time wanting a like BB gun. Is oh, it, sure. Is that still a thing that children want? I don't know about now, but I'd say in my generation. Okay. See, I, I grew up an only child and a girl, so I did not want a BB gun. <laughs> what was your, do you have a most wanted Christmas gift that you remember like that was the one? I'm going to think about that. I don't know that I do. Every Christmas was wonderful. What was something you really wanted that you did end up getting? Um, I got a bike one year. Classic. Um, Easy Bake Oven. Oh, which see, was that's like very nostalgic for, for me. Yeah. Seeing that, because yeah, I remember getting my Easy Bake Oven and being really excited about it. Was it a light bulb? Yes. That, it's still yeah. the light bulb. It's still the light bulb. I think it's different now. Is it? Actually, I don't know. I think so. Oh. I kind of like as an adult, I kind of want an Easy Bake Oven just because. Yeah, like, just make one cookie at a time. Yeah. I think Easy Bake Oven was probably one of my biggest things, for sure. I'd always asked for a remote control car. Uh -huh. And then as an adult, I was like, hey, I have the money. I can just go buy one now. But then I thought like, well, then I'll be an adult driving a remote control car. And although I'm still someone who does a lot of childlike things <laughs> because it's just fun. And yeah. I, my sense of fun hasn't changed all that much. It did make me sad about the idea of like me going out somewhere and playing with a car by myself. <laughs> so I never ended up getting it. Oh, that. that's sad. Yeah. But I remember getting a Transformer that I wanted. I got mm -hmm. Optimus Prime. Oh, that yeah. That was a yeah. big deal. Like a big thing was Transformers and like mm -hmm. Barbie, Polly Pocket. I had a lot of Polly Pockets as a child. Yeah, that was in the era where tiny things were cool. Yeah, and like, I, I don't know who thought it was a good idea to give children the tiniest toys in the world yeah. to like take care of. And I like early on, we get some flashback scenes or not even flashbacks, uh, fantasy sequences. And I love how much they're like cartoons because we're seeing all this filtered through the mind of this child. All of the swearing has been changed to just like, Wretch and Yeah, I like that. I like that the dad just had like, you could tell that he was saying a lot of swears. Yeah. But it was just like nonsense. And we get introduced to Ralphie's little brother, Randy, who is maybe my favorite character in this movie. Really? I thought he's hilarious. Uh, he gives a very good performance with very few words. He just has that whine he does a lot. And yeah. he just uses it over and over again. And I was like, yeah, that's what a little brother sounds like. <laughs> is that what you sounded like? No, I was great. <laughs> 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 but I, I like how everything seems to be filtered through Ralphie's mind. Characters aren't always full-fledged characters because he doesn't have that insight to them and he just has this certain view of everyone mm -hmm. and that's the view that we get yeah and the sequence where randy is getting dressed up to go outside oh was great God. because I, do we all remember that like oh yeah snowsuit yeah and by the time you had your snowsuit on you were so hot that like you needed to go outside and, and then, then if you start sweating that's the worst because you sweat inside you go outside and then you freeze and, and you then freeze. your hair freezes solid yeah which is something that i think maybe not all of our <laughs> listeners know about but where we live that is a very big concern yeah you don't go outside with any kind of moisture on no, your skin or solid. hair because you can lose like your nose and if randy falls down and he can't get up did you have a big snowsuit that you couldn't move in as well 
I think I could move in it. I just like I wasn't really an outdoor kid. Right. Yeah, you're you're more of an indoor kid. It's more of an indoor. You're kid. an indoor adult as well. Yes. Um. So especially when the weather is not very nice, um, i.e., winter, uh, I think it wasn't always exciting for me to want to go out and play anyway. Mm-hmm. So I like I had some neighborhood friends when I was young, um, that I would go out and play with, and I remember one year they shoveled all of the snow onto the island of our cul-de-sac, and it was probably only like five feet high oh the big snow mountain but it though. felt yeah. like it was like 10 feet high and we made like a slide in it and i don't know what adult let us slide right into the road but you like we had little like rooms that we like carved out of it was so cool and when somebody that is the best somebody's mom gave them like water with food coloring that we could like spray on it so mm-hmm. it was like colored that was like the coolest thing a child can have my biggest thing was one year there was probably about four feet of snow just everywhere. Yeah. And you, you might think I'm exaggerating if you're not from here, but no, no, I actually mean four feet, like a meter of snow. Yeah. And that's just how it is all over the place. So then you'd also get big piles. Mm-hmm. And I was old enough that I could push a snow blower, and I had l- little enough supervision that I was allowed to go and use it by myself. So I went out and... We had a very big backyard, and I kind of dug a maze system with a snowblower so I couldn't see out of it. Oh. So me and Galen would just play in this kind of like (laughs) in these trenches, right? And have these big snowball wars and build forts in there. Yeah. It was pretty great. And they go to school and they do a bit where they all wear fake teeth, and we get to see the teacher's drawer of confiscated goods. Did you ever get anything taken away? Oh, yeah. I'm I sure. feel like you were one of those kids. <laughs> what, is, what, what kind of kid was I? Uh, like a bad kid. I don't think I was a bad kid. I was an active kid. <laughs> <laughs> active. In grade seven, so when I was older, I got a water gun taken away because I had a teacher who was like a real dick. And this isn't like being a kid and going like, yeah, authority, they're real jerks. But this guy was like a straight up asshole. Mm. And he would spray me with a spray bottle constantly every time he went to go what? water the plants. Like once a day, he'd spray me. What? And he's like, ha ha ha, that's funny. He's like, all right, okay, that's that's how we play it. It's a funny thing. I'm cool with that. So I brought a water gun and he sprayed me and I sprayed him back. And then I got detention. He took my water gun away. Oh, no. Yeah, and it's like... I don't understand the logic of that then. You literally did the exact same thing to me. Yeah, that's that's not fair rules, for sure. I think I'm on your side. Also, I don't know that that would fly nowadays. No, that teacher also made the seating chart um, based on ethnicity. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's not allowed. The second back row was me and one Pakistani girl, and then there was one black kid who sat behind us, and we're like, oh, poor Sheena. Oh Back there gosh. all by yourself. At least I got you. Wow. And then the um, the two Chinese kids were in the row above in front yeah. of us. And all the white kids sat in the front. Based on where in Europe you were from. Really? Yeah. This is 100% true. Was and this he, a social studies class? This was homeroom. Oh. So it was just like four. And you'd think like, okay, that's like, maybe he could do it by the map. And yeah. make, but it wasn't by the map. It was just like the darker you are, the further back you are. That's awful. Yeah, that's not good. He also um, was really Jesusy and kept going on and like kept preaching like to us in a public school. No, oh. not cool either. Yeah, you're not allowed to do that either. No. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we get the a really good sequence, one of the the classics of this that has gone beyond the movie and gotten into popular culture when. They're talking about whether or not your tongue will freeze to a pole if you stick it to it. Did you ever do this? Kind of. Me too. Did you? What happened to you? Um, you know, we were having that same conversation, and um, I stuck like the side of my tongue because I knew that if like it ripped all the taste buds off the front of my tongue, I'd be really sad. But the side, you're like, eh, I don't need to use the side that much. I was like less taste buds on the side, I think. Okay. Um, it was more like side under. Sure. So it was like a little bit less to lose. Um, and and what happened? I got stuck. <laughs> and then I just like drooled enough that it like melted the ice. That is the secret. Yeah. All of you out there, if you've never experienced this, you need to spit on it. You yeah. have to try to. You have to produce as much saliva yeah. as you can. 
and kind or else of, you had to get your like your friend to pee on it and you don't want that <laughs> you have to kind of like flood the area yep. with warm liquid in order to get yourself off the pole so i didn't lose any taste buds but it was traumatic i unintentionally did it like, what i not the a pole but it's it's real cold where we live yes. and i had this i would walk to school every day and it would be like 30 below some days and the zipper on my jacket was so cold. And, you know, kids just have, like, their mouths on everything. Yeah, kids And it's already, like, right at mouth level. So I got my lip stuck to my zipper. Oh. And it, like, peeled a big piece of my lip off. And it was pretty terrible. Oh, that's awful. It really was. And especially because it's, like, something metal that's already by your face. Yeah. It's not, like... I didn't have a chance. Me and my friends who were, like, trying it just because we'd heard it was, like, a thing that happened. I knew that it was true already, so I never tried it myself because I thought it sounded terrible. It was terrible. But I love this scene because there's the lines like, you're full of beans and so is your old man. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> I love the double dare, the double dog dare, the oh, triple yeah. dog dare. Yeah. And the idea of leaving someone because the bell rang. Because like the there would be things happening, I remember, on the playground. And then the bell rings and you're like, well... Too bad. We can't do anything about it. The bell rang. That Did is everyone the end. like scream when you're your like, bell yeah, rang? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. like a big like collective scream from the playground and everyone would start running towards the door. Bell. Yeah. And then you'd get there and you'd have to like wait around anyway. I don't know what we were all running for, yeah. but we just, we were conditioned. Like you need to you run need when to that bell get goes. inside right yeah. now. It was some good Pavlovian conditioning. Yeah. Wow. They really did a number on us. Cause mm-hmm. yeah, I just remember like that sound just struck panic. It didn't matter how close to the classroom or the door that we went in was, you still panicked. Yeah, for sure. You dropped whatever you were holding and ran. Were you susceptible to dares? No. People would dare you and you just wouldn't do it? Yeah. Oh, tough. Yeah. Tough crowd. Did you do Yeah, a- still now. You don't do things on dares. <laughs> I dare you to do stuff all the time. Yeah. It'll just be like something funny. It's like, hey, why don't you eat that sour thing? You're like, no, why would I? I would rather not. I was like, well, that's <laughs> fair, but it's not fun. <laughs> I'm impervious to dares. <laughs> or I'm just no fun. <laughs> I've become susceptible to dares in my adulthood oh really like if you chant something oh I'll true. Just like, okay i guess i gotta true i do often do that because i am someone who's less likely to uh to drink a lot of alcohol or to like want to go out but if you say like come on that's one <laughs> yeah. if you say come on like three times i'll do whatever yeah and if you chant it like if you're like drink 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 yeah. i was like okay well, i guess i gotta yeah because that is fun <laughs> yes if exactly. someone chants something you have to do it you can't like let down a chant no i do remember one chant where galen friend of the podcast oh yeah and i started chanting drink the sill drink the sill we have a window sill in our kitchen <laughs> right, yeah and uh and to, we decided that we were going to drink the length of the cell yeah and i didn't want to but you guys chanted we so chanted and then you started chanting and then we did it yeah and nobody won. <laughs> <laughs> and we were in our 30s. And we were, this was two months ago. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get to meet Scott Farkas and his little toady. Yeah. Scott Farkas was great. That is a good character because I feel like it, someone can relate to it. Everyone's like, yeah, I, I had a Scott Farkas. Yeah, I think so. I know my Scott Farkas. Did Ooh, you? Yeah, that guy was, he was crazy. He was a crazy person. Now looking back on him like, Oh, he had a fucked up home life. And I see that now. But at the time, I'm just like, this gets scary. Yeah. Why Why would you know that as a child yeah. too, right? Like, like, it's not something that you're like, oh, his mom and dad are like bad people. So yeah. he's a bad person. Um, I, I think there was like a bully in my elementary school. Everyone was a bully in my junior high school. And then in high school, I don't think there was one. This is one thing that I think there is usually a distinction between boys and girls growing up. I think your bullying is probably different. Yes. You didn't have like a Scott Farkas type bully that like no, beats you up. I was never beat up. Mm. Or like, yeah, there was nothing ever like physical. It was all like psychological warfare. Which is 
even worse. They, they always say like, oh, but that's worse. It's like, I don't know. Have you like been beaten up? It's not great. <laughs> no, I, I'm not saying it's like. True, true. It's just like, it's bad. Yeah. The psychological warfare between girls is just like an awful, awful thing. And the reason that I will not coach junior high cheerleading. Yeah. I, I taught junior high for a couple of years and yeah, it's, it's, it's rough out there. Sometimes yeah. you're just like, man, I liked it in elementary school when kids would just like kick each other in the shins. I could yeah. deal with that. You can't reason with junior high children. True. Whereas with like high school, there's like a little bit of that, but you can like have a one on one conversation with them and they like understand. Yeah. They have the brain capacity to like understand right and wrong. I did not enjoy junior high because of that. And it was a very different kind of bullying. Yeah, in elementary school, I think I was more susceptible. I was the only brown kid in the school. There was one black kid and three Chinese kids. Oh. And we stood out and like, elementary school bullies are a certain kind and like yeah it was a target for sure but by the time I was in junior high I realized that like being on a sports team and being kind of funny like gets you out of most things and then you're like you know what this kid's all right now and of course the father gets his what's it called a big prize something prize a Uh, special thing that he kept calling it major award oh a major award he gets a major award and another thing that has transcended this movie is that leg lamp because it's so like ridiculously specific and although nobody can be like oh yeah my dad had a leg lamp we kind of all get the sentiment behind it about getting something that you think like oh this means something and having such pride in something and then losing it that was a lot of fun yeah i liked that um i've seen the leg lamp around in like gift shops like i remember seeing it oh i remember seeing a leg lamp slurpee cup in las vegas oh. that was like one of the slurpee cups that you could get um for those like yard of booze slurpees that you can buy on the strip in vegas and i was like i don't get this reference and i think you were like someday you will someday someday <laughs> today's that day today's that day i get it i love that every time ralphie is up to it he starts like kind of caressing it and yeah. his mom's like ralphie no yeah he's and like want putting to... his hand up by the butt <laughs> yeah. and stuff and like it was a very autonomously correct leg so yeah i could see it was why, a realistic like, leg a young boy would be very interested in that yeah and he's not quite sure why he's interested yeah. but he's very interested and you can see like he's looking at something else and you can just see his like hand snake up it. Yeah. Like he just wants to feel it. That was a great bit. Yeah, it was really funny. And just the mom's reaction to the whole lamp in general. That was pretty funny. Yeah, that was pretty cute. I love that there's just neighborhood dogs that are all wild. Yeah, I... We both grew up in relatively <laughs> yes, rich areas. There were no roaming dogs. So I have a kind of a roaming dog story. First, I once was chased all the way from the basketball court home by a Rottweiler. But that was just somebody's because that's an expensive dog. Yes, that is an expensive but dog. You can ask again, friend of the show, Galen, yeah. about the legend of the pig dog. Oh. So we would see this animal that I wasn't sure if it was a pig or a dog. Oh, that's scary. I have learned that there is a possibility that there could be wild boars in our province. Theoretically, it could have gotten into like because we lived in the suburbs. There were woods around. Yeah, yeah. So it's possible that it actually was a wild boar. Oh, but the legend of the pig dog is that it would only come out on Thursday afternoons because maybe (laughs) I just saw it twice on Thursday afternoons. Or maybe it was actually some kind of breed of dog that my own mind has turned into the legend of the pig dog. Oh, but I remember once. It got into our yard and I was like, I don't know what to do. I'm not going to go out there. There's a fucking pig dog out there. (laughs) So I just opened all of our gates and went inside and waited. And then when I went out the next morning, it was gone. It was gone? Yeah. Because it was Friday by that point. And the pig dog only comes out on Thursday. Huh. I don't think there was anything ever like that. I remember, like, I grew up in a suburb of Sherwood Park. um, And one of the ones where everyone built, like, a house and so it slowly filled up so our backyard for a while was cows and i remember seeing the cows and my mom tells the story of me being scared of cows because they were always fenced in and it's not 
because cows will run away. It was because they were vicious. Yeah, that's why they're in there. Because they'll eat you up. I thought, and I don't know where we were. We were somewhere where we were like really close to cows and they may not have been fenced in. And I was terrified because I thought cows were fenced in for our safety, not for their safety. (laughs) (laughs) And so that was the scariest thing um, as a child that was like animal related because I thought the cows were vicious and I was in danger. (laughs) So then we get a sequence where they get a flat tire. And I kind of like this idea that the dad like relishes these opportunities to repair things. Yeah. And he's like, okay, time me. I'm going to do it in four minutes. And how happy Ralphie is that he gets to go out and help him. He's like, really? I get to go help him? And then as soon as he gets there, he's like, hold this. And then Ralphie holds it. He's like, not like that. And that seems that's something that uh, touches home for me of like, Trying to help, but like clearly you're doing it wrong. Yeah. You have no explanation of what to do, but yeah. whatever you or did, why it's the wrong, wrong. way. Yeah. yeah, and then everything gets knocked out of his hand. So Ralphie swears, oh. and that was a really fun right. moment as well. And the dad is like livid. No, he's like silent. Yeah, which you know that's even it's almost worse. worse. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever get caught swearing in front of your parents? I don't. I don't think so. I'm probably. I it's feel not like your like parents a... would be more permissive of it. They'd be like, hey, don't. I don't guess... actually remember. I'm guessing you never got your mouth washed out with soap. No, never. Never. I did get sent to my room a bit. And I, I always would just like cry the entire time because I always felt so bad. Yeah. I didn't do well with like authority figures being mad at me. Yeah. Um. So I just like dissolve into tears anytime there's any kind of conflict. But And you, of course weren't raised by immigrant parents so there is there's a definite difference because so often i would tell samantha stories about my childhood which i think are like fun time stories (laughs) and i on the record loved my childhood i had so much fun i was very happy but the way i say things you're like that sounds like a nightmare (laughs) but to me it's like yeah you know it's different right yeah yeah. I definitely got my mouth washed out with soap. I only remember one time. There might have been multiples. My brother got it a lot. Yeah. Because, well, he had a dirty mouth. <laughs> I, I don't even remember what I said, but I remember getting my mouth washed out with soap. And I was like, oh, I'm going to beat the system. I'm just going to clench my teeth. And then getting it kind of like rubbed across my gums in the front of my teeth. Ooh. And then I had soap all in my teeth. Oh, yeah. So I remember that very well. I remember once I like... I got in trouble for making like a face at my cousin, Donald. Um, and I think Jasmine, his wife, listens to our show. So hi, Jasmine. Oh, that's a good story. Um, and he told on me. Oh. We had like gone up to this far of like, like what happens between all the kids stays between all the kids. And like, so like I was pretty sure he wasn't going to tell on me. So I felt like pretty safe and doing what I did. And then he told on me and I got sent to my room during a family party. What what kind of face did you make? Did you like stick out your tongue to the, Ew. I think I like, I did this. I've got She's like, doing the, um, <laughs> the old thumb on the nose. And like wiggling your fingers. Yeah. yeah. And I how, think, how old were you, the two of you? Ah, uh, so he's ten years older than me. So I think I might have been like six, and he might have. So been he like, was too old to tell on oh, you for he doing was that. Way too old to tell on me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, come on! I felt betrayed. And to tell on someone who's ten years younger than yeah. you—that's that's not a good look. Either. Yeah, no, he was definitely old enough to like keep it between ourselves. <laughs> and I wasn't even doing anything that was like super offensive. No. <laughs> And the second time, uh, maybe the first time I ever swore in front of my mother, first and only time, (laughs) was not that long ago because I was a full-grown adult and I didn't live at home, but I was at home is during Christmas and my sisters were in town as well and they said like, oh, do you want to go do this thing? Like, And I was like, yeah, sure. And they're like, okay, we're going to need a ride at like 7 a.m. And I went, oh, 7 a.m., fuck. And my mom was in the next room and I didn't know. And then I saw her and our eyes locked and I was like, oh, no. And she came over and she hit me. What? <laughs> I had it coming. I shouldn't be swearing at home. No. <laughs> she doesn't listen to this podcast, though, so I can swear all I want. It's true. I remember my mom gave up a while ago um, trying to get me to not swear. And I don't, I don't swear a bunch. Like... I pretty much only swear on this podcast <laughs> or when I play hockey. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I uh, 
like it's just like if i'm really mad and i'm telling my mom something elsewhere but uh uh, yeah i said i remember the first time she called me out on saying shitty and i was like that's not a swear (laughs) (laughs) that's not a swear that's just like a descriptor of something that's not good (laughs) you said that in front of my mom i I was like sam but you you just keep doing it i'm sorry She lets you get away with it. Yeah, I've never been. I've never been smacked. <laughs> Not yet. We'll see. I guess we are. I'm officially part of the family now. Yeah, now she. Can I have the last you. name and everything. <laughs> She's gonna get the wooden spoon. <laughs> the, the, the iron shoe. <laughs> oh, the, oh, the shoe's a whole other story. Yeah, that's Gurry about that. Yeah. <laughs> So then he is fantasizing about going blind and how sorry everyone will yeah. be, which is another kid thing. Of oh, like, totally. Yeah, then they'll be sorry. Yeah. It's like when you run away. Yeah. Like, they'll be sorry when I'm gone. <laughs> I like that a lot. And I really like the sequence where he gets his decoder, like, it's not a ring, some sort of apparatus. It was a decoder ring. That's oh, it was a ring. That's what they called it, yeah. Okay. It's to decode the code from little orphan annie's radio show and it turns out that it was just a lousy commercial and he's told be sure to drink your ovaltine and he gets the a very important lesson that a lot of kids realize that like yeah capitalism ruins everything true when did you learn that i don't know i just remember playing x-men arcades revenge for the super nintendo Mm -hmm. i was like this is the greatest thing it's the x-men and then i was like but this is bad. But X Men are great. How could how can these two things exist? <laughs> and then I realized, like, oh, let's just put like the name of something good on any piece of garbage. Mm. Yeah, it's get, a hard you, lesson. If you can pay for the licensing, hard lesson. <laughs> yeah. And they have the moment where the lamp gets broken, and I like that they don't actually show it, so you don't really know what happens, and it's kind of a. A point of controversy in the family for many years of like, was the lamp intentionally broken? What do you think? I think no. I agree. But I I wouldn't blame her. I get, well, I mean, yeah. (laughs) But I think it was not. And I think it breaking the second time is on him because he didn't let the glue dry. Yeah. He put that like heavy lampshade on. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was glue, but maybe. maybe it was tape. Either way, it was ill-conceived repair. Because he went out, so I assumed he wanted to go buy glue. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, he didn't let the glue dry and then put that heavy lampshade on it. So of course it's going to fall apart. Yeah, that's on you. Yeah, it's his fault. I've had things in our home that I was really hoping would break. But luckily when we moved, they just didn't get unpacked. <laughs> <laughs> what things? <laughs> well, you know me. I don't like signs yes. in a home. Yeah. I don't want something above the kitchen sink that says eat. I don't want something above a couch that says gather. I don't want love. I don't want, I definitely don't want live, laugh, love. Oh, the trifecta? No. No, I don't like signs telling me what to do. I don't like framed single words. I feel like that is uh, the absence of art because you're not saying anything with an image or with any sort of artistic merit you're just saying the word it's like i want to give the feeling of love so i'll just write the word love in the script <laughs> right it's terrible i hate it and uh you hate it less so I do. our signs have not come into our new home which i'm pretty happy about. <laughs> i do text you every time i'm at winners and i see like that what was it last it was like um this like it's wine s- o'clock somewhere no it was the <laughs> set of like ceramic gourds and they said like blessed and family oh. and love and gather and you were like make sure you get two of the blessed ones yeah <laughs> hashtag blessed you know what i need is a ceramic gourd that says hashtag blessed it didn't have hashtags on it but it was written in like a a whimsical font (laughs) terrible my mom gets a kick out of that too she sees things and she she's held off on sending you photos (laughs) because i won't be able to tell if she's joking or not and i won't want to be mean so i'll be like oh nice no she and i have had multiple discussions about this sometimes she sends me the pictures i totally wanted a pillow that says don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. <laughs> I don't have a personality. I need my pillow to have it for me. <laughs> I'm probably offending people right now. Probably, yeah. That's a that's a huge market. But you know what? Maybe you should take a look at yourself <laughs> and your pillows. That's all I'm saying. It's a huge craft sale market. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, we we're going to a craft sale on the weekend, and I feel like we should make it into like a game. Ooh, that's gonna be a rough game. <laughs> 
<laughs> Meanwhile, in the movie, <laughs> Ralphie snaps on Scott Farkas. And that reminded me very much of something that happened to me. Because there was one day, these three kids were bullying, bullying me. They kept kicking my feet and knocking me down into the snow at lunch. And I was just like, that's it. And I snapped on them. <gasps> did you beat someone up? Yeah. Fuck yeah, I did. So the first one, like, I, I clocked him pretty good. I don't think I got him in the face, but I think I kind of got him in, like, the neck area. Uh-huh. And then he just ran. And one of the other, they all started to just, like, oh, shit, like, and let's run. But I caught one of them. And I pulled him down. And very much like in this movie, I just jumped on top and just started wailing on this dude. <laughs> wow. And I was enraged and i was crying yeah because i think i was like right on the verge of tears while they were doing this because right. i'm like uh, probably seven or so at this right. point. right you're little yeah and they were kept kicking me and knocking me down and i was like trying not to cry and so like, just keep walking just keep walking and then i just couldn't anymore and i started crying and i caught him and i beat the shit out of that kid was he bigger than you he that that one was yeah uh. One of them was pretty little, but there were three of them. So, right. okay. But yeah, the one that I caught, I think that's why I caught him. He was the biggest one. Yeah. So it wasn't as quick. You slow. <laughs> so I, I caught him and I jumped on him and I started wailing on him. Huh. He didn't bleed, but like in this movie, his glasses broke. And that was the only point where I was like, oh, no. Because that, in my mind, as a child, it's like that has monetary value. Yeah, and those are and expensive. I don't have money. And your parents make sure you know that they're expensive. Yeah. So my, I was like, oh, man, if my parents had to pay for these glasses, yeah. I am done. He never said anything, I guess. I never heard about it again. Oh, wow. So then they go and they watch the Santa Parade, which is very Wizard of Oz heavy. So I think this comes out the year... It takes place the year after Wizard of Oz. Oh, okay. And I love the mall Santa sequence. That's another one that is, has transcended this movie. I love that bit where every kid who gets placed on Santa's lap just kind of like waits for one second and then just screams because mm-hmm. that's very true to life as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you have pictures of you crying on Santa's lap? No. Oh, were you good? You let, like, would sit in Santa's lap? Oh, yeah. No, I was totally a photo child. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I love the slide that the kids just get thrown down. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. And that one point of view shot where it's from Ralphie's point of view and he gets like spun around and sees everything. And then yeah. just this creepy Santa like, what do you want, kid? Oh, that was so creepy. <laughs> he was scary. He was a scary Santa. Yeah, that was a scary. Yeah. Most Santas are pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We saw pictures from someone recently. I can't remember who it was, but they had a very scary Santa. Yeah. That was Gus's yeah. Santa. Yeah, that was a scary Santa. <laughs> this is a very Galen heavy episode. Yeah, really <laughs> I feel is. like he should be here to back himself up. <laughs> <laughs> no rebuttal for you, Galen Pendleton. <laughs> <laughs> and I also love that weird kid with the goggles. Yeah. I'm just like, I like Santa. Oh my God, he was so <laughs> weird. But I feel like everybody knew a child like that. Oh, I knew a child like, like a that. a real weirdo. I was just thinking I would love to look up a couple of kids from elementary. And I was like, at that point, it was like, this kid will never function in the world. No. How, how will they live? Yeah. I want to see what became of them. Oh, yeah. There was one in my class who was like obsessed with magpies. Oh. It was like any school assignment where he could like wedge magpies into it. He just did a report on magpies. And for all of you out there, from where we live, they are very common and they're, they're everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. So it's not like a, an exotic thing. No, he was like obsessed with It's like them. being in New York and being obsessed with rats. Yeah. Hmm, that's weird. It was very strange. I bet that kid's a creep now. I kind of want to look him up now. I don't remember his I last name, I bet he's real into taxidermy. Oh, yeah. He, he did seem like he was one step away from taxidermying a magpie and carrying it around with him. Yeah, and I think he did that probably in like junior high, and he's graduated to human now. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he's just like a biologist. And, yeah, uh, maybe. Loves them birds. And then it's Christmas Eve and we get to see them finishing, putting up their tree. And I love old timey trees. I kind of hated them. And I l- remember when we switched over to what we consider like a, a more modern Christmas tree aesthetic. Like a real triangle and tree. And at the time I was like, yes, like this is classy when I was like, <laughs> I don't know, 16. <laughs> but now I miss those ones that are just like a pyramid covered in tinsel. You can't yeah. even see the tree. And they had those giant light bulbs that would start fires. Like oh, nothing. yeah. The glass ones. Yeah. yeah. That you had to be so careful detangling. Yeah, because they would just shatter. Yeah. And then you'd step on them and your feet would get all cut up like John McClane. What? John McClane got cut up? 
John McClane's feet. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you went in real life. <laughs> like Bruce Willis? Yeah. Oh. And yeah, I, I remember having to help detangle those strings of lights and how annoying they were because you couldn't just pull on them. No. Because also, if one light shorted out, none of them worked. Yeah, and then you wouldn't know which one it is, exactly. so you'd have to go one by one. Uh, and then if it was two, oh, God help you're you. You're done. You're done, yeah. Yeah. Might as well cancel Christmas. Can't, Christmas is canceled. Take <laughs> down the tree, throw it away. <laughs> but yeah, I just remember having to be so so careful and that tinsel getting everywhere yeah that like stringy tinsel which is very hazardous i know remember my cat ate some did he yeah muggy yeah <laughs> he was the best and then um <laughs> then there's like just tinsel hanging out of his butt and you just had to Ew. wait for it you can pull it well that's dangerous too because it's like in their inside it's saving kind, kind of sharp, sharp. Yeah. yeah you should oh, pull on it oh my you muggy. could but we're like mm. Oh, we should just trim it so it doesn't get cut, cut and stuff. That's <laughs> what you should that's do, awful. I think. Yeah. I didn't grow up with animals, so I never knew that. Just next to scary cows. Yeah, just next to scary cows. I never knew how um, prevalent and like risky it was for animals to eat things around the house. I grew up like not even thinking about that. And you never ate the tinsel. I did not. That's good. I did not. Good we job. we weren't a tinsel household. Oh. My grandpa was. Mm. So when we'd go to visit my grandpa at Christmas, um, he'd always have a lot of tinsel. And it, I just remember it being like static t- to my clothing. Yeah, we kind of have different generations of Christmas because although we're close to the same age, I'm the youngest of six and you're an only child or the oldest. Yeah. So we kind of uh, skew differently <laughs> yes, that way. Yes, yeah. And then it's Christmas morning and they're all opening their presents. I love that they open up socks and they just throw them over their shoulder. Do you remember getting clothing as gifts and how boring it was? Yes. Oh, man. That is totally what you do with it. You just like throw it behind you. Like, oh, sweet pajamas. Oh, yay. (laughs) Wear (laughs) the toys. Now like socks. Yes. I'm like... Please give me clothing. All I want is clothing. This is true. <laughs> um, and back then it was just, it was the worst present you could buy a child. Did you have a worst present you got? Just like socks and stuff? Yeah. It was like socks and underwear. Because underwear was embarrassing too. That's true. Like, if you open it up in front of it. Yeah, yeah. Like I just, I was always so embarrassed whenever underwear happened. And it was just like, it was the worst thing you could possibly unwrap under the tree. I remember I got from my grandmother, and I think I was like a teenager at this point, like maybe like 14-ish. She got me a uh, chicken salt and pepper shaker. It was like a, a chicken, and then on each side, there was like a salt on one side and a pepper on the other. I'm sorry, they, how old were you? Like 14-ish. Okay. <laughs> and they, didn't, they also didn't have bottoms, so you couldn't actually use them oh. functionally. So I was very confused by it, but I was just like, oh, thank you. And then I put it up on a shelf and it just stayed there forever. It got to the point where it was like a joke and it was kind of like the best thing. Mm, right. <laughs> yeah, that's always that's always fun. I was like, oh, I got my chicken salt and pepper shakers up there that I can't use. Yeah. It's really funny how things now, like beyond the fact of having received them, that they end up being nostalgic. Like, yeah. you're like, man, that was, like, the best. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah. Because at the time, though, I was old enough that I wasn't like, what? This is what I got? I was just like, you know what? She doesn't know what I like. She fundamentally doesn't understand my life. And yeah. And she saw this cute thing and she bought it for me. So yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, sweet, cool. I know I'm not going to use it, but no. it was like, It's like the cool. thought that counts, right? Yeah. yeah. I remember the day, uh, it was, like, just after Christmas, we had visited my grandpa of the tinsel tree and uh he handed me twenty dollars and he's like go downtown and buy yourself something pretty and i was like nice i think i was like 16 or 17 i was like i from a feminist point of view i should be offended but also my grandpa is like doing something really nice for me <laughs> if someone told me to gave me money and said buy something pretty i'd be like yes yeah. sir and then i'd go buy myself something something pretty I'd probably lean towards cute more than pretty, but... Mm, true. Yeah. I think I bought myself some red leather gloves. Oh, pretty. Yeah, they were very pretty. There you go. But he, Ralphie, gets that pink bunny suit yes. where he looks like a pink oh, nightmare. Man. And I loved that. That was hilarious. I would too. wear that bunny suit. Oh, I'd wear that right yeah. now. That's... I would be wearing it right now. I know you would. If you had one, you would be wearing it. 
And then when we think Christmas is all over, there's a really great moment where his dad says, like, oh, there's there's something over there. And, of course, it is the gun that he had wanted this whole time. The best gift in the world. And what I didn't realize when I'd watched this movie probably as a kid is how much joy the father gets watching him, mm-hmm. like, load it and everything. And he's trying not to take it out of his hands and do it for him, but he's, like, miming everything with him. Yeah. Kind of, like, reliving his own childhood yeah. and, like, kind of passing this on to his son as well. And that was a really sweet moment. Yeah, I like that. That's It's such a nice parent moment mm. of, like... Oh, I like I really wanted this for you. And this movie doesn't just do the like dad was this grumpy guy all the time. Mm-hmm. They show a good variety of him. And I'm glad that we got this sweet moment with the father at the end. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. And of course, he goes out, uh, almost shoots his eye out <laughs> and does a classic kid thing of just lying and saying something else happened. Yes, exactly. <laughs> do you, you lie to cover things up like that? You probably didn't get hurt as much. No, I don't think I did. Oh, I lied I... about homework. Was, oh, yeah. Like, you gotta lie about your oh, homework. Oh, yeah. Like, I just forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot about it. I forgot about an entire semester work of homework. <laughs> and then you just said, like, oh, no, they just gave it to me yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, like, um, permission slips. Right. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Like, I just got it after school today. <laughs> and it, it was due today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the teachers who were wrong, yeah. not me. Oh, she put the wrong date on the form. So it's okay if I hand it in today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I was hardworking teacher. I still lie about injuries all the time because yeah. I get hurt a lot. You do. And I just don't tell anyone because, like, kind of like what's the point you just worry or i do worry and your mother. mom worries yeah. my mom worries yeah about everyone you. worries because i'm always getting hurt but yeah like yeah there's nothing i can do indies usually get hurt getting like playing hockey not just like in the world yeah. <laughs> usually not but then sometimes because some days i have a physical job mm-hmm. and or you're just out there shoveling snow. You can hurt yourself true, doing that. Very I'm true. I'm an old man. The first time I shoveled snow this year, I thought my arms were going to fall off. Yeah, because they might. I woke up the next morning and I could like barely move my wrists. And it was, uh, it was pretty sad. Yeah. Aging. And rather than complain about it, I just don't tell anyone. And then I'll just get better. Usually. Sometimes. You, most things you get better from. There are a few things that are like, oh, that's just my life now. It's just my shoulders don't work anymore. Yeah, they don't. No, one of them does. <laughs> but, oh, and then the, the roving pack of dogs comes oh and eats their turkey, which was also like ridiculous, but yeah. funny. Oh, yeah. I love the music that they play over that scene. Yeah, the, the music in this was fun. And then they just go to the Chinese restaurant instead and have Chinese turkey, which is a duck. And offensively sung Christmas carols. (laughs) Very true. That was a hard scene to watch. True. And far be it for me to defend anything racist. (laughs) But for a movie about the 40s and made in the 80s, pretty clean for the most part. And as someone who uh, spent many years teaching English in East Asia, it is not inaccurate. So those are like hard words for yes. people with those accents? Because um, I, I know Korean much better than mm-hmm. I do any of the Chinese languages, but they don't have an R or an L. They have one sound that is in between. So when we use R's and L's, they're like, that's the same sound. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Mm. Just like when I pronounce certain things in other languages and you're like, I don't hear the difference because right. we're not conditioned to hear that difference. Right. So they only have one sound that's between R and L. So they have R and L's are interchangeable. Oh. So it is actually like a thing. Okay. and That makes I me remember, feel a little better about it. I can't remember what it was, but um, I have many Korean friends and we would come up with like tongue twisters for the other, but not like our classic tongue twisters, mm-hmm. something that you know is hard for that person to say because right. of the language they speak. Mm-hmm. So like werewolf is like the hardest thing for a Korean person to say because <gasps> oh. there's no w, there's no l, and there's no f. So it was always er upa. Because you can't say werewolf no. with, with Korean it's sounds. It's just not how that works. I can't remember what the sentence I came up with was. It was like, the rollerblading werewolf loves charcuterie. <laughs> and if you speak 
pretty much all of the East Asian ang- languages as your first language and you're learning English, you can't say that phrase. Oh it's my just, goodness. It's very hard. But we'll save that for our linguistics podcast, which I really would love to have. <laughs> Lingo time with Indy. <laughs> oh man, that'd be so fun. The movie ends on a scene that I'd forgotten about where the parents just kind of sit and watch the tree uh, on Christmas night and the kids are sleeping with yeah. their beloved toys and everything is well in the world. It and is... that's kind of a, a good place to end a movie like yeah, this. Yeah, that's a fun little moment. And it's definitely something that even if you don't have kids, you can like kind of relate to is like after a party. And everyone goes home and you yeah. just get to be like, oh. <laughs> just get to relax. I liked, I liked that part of this movie because it's definitely a big day for parents, Christmas. Mm-hmm. And it's like you have to be on from like five in the morning or whenever your parents or whenever your kids wake you up until they go to bed. Yeah. And we get to see them be husband and wife for mm-hmm. a brief moment and not just mother and father, yeah. which they are through the whole movie because it's all through wealth, yep. Ralphie's uh, point of view. Because I think they're even credited as mom and the old man, right? <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's a very enjoyable movie. If you try to break it down, technically a lot of things aren't great. I don't think the, the direction is particularly mm-hmm. good. The editing is something that I always, when I watched it, I was like, man, I want to just, I want to get in there and recut this. Re-edit I think I could, I could re-edit it to tighten it up a little bit. Is that called remastering? No, oh. but that maybe it needs some of that too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know all the film terms. <laughs> I think this is one of those ones where you can't go too deep into it. I, I don't know. I think you could. I think you could talk but more about the script and how the specificity of certain moments really allow it to transcend generations. And you'd think that making a very specific in the 1940s would really limit it to that time period. But I think how specific it is in the emotions felt by Ralphie specifically mm-hmm. are something that so many people can uh, can latch on to. I guess that's what I meant was like it kind of makes you think about your life more yeah. than his life. And well, by I think like that's something that all the plot, all good movies do like the the movies that I love. Sure, it can be about um, like this futuristic story happening in Hong Kong, but those emotions, Mm -hmm. if they can touch something in you, that's what makes good sci-fi good. It's not, well, to me at least, it's not these big grand um, like space battles that do it. It's where it touches something within you that you feel like can transcend that specific character and relate to you or to others or ideally universally. And I think this, of course, it can't be universal because it is still Western. It is still Christmas. But from someone like me who is born more than 40 years after this takes place, who's not white, who's not American, it can still get into certain things Mm -hmm. that I can feel. Yeah. And even if you're not a Christmas person, there's probably still a lot of the childhood elements. Like the bully, those relationships, like the time when... His mom and him kind of have a little secret and are keeping something away from the father. Mm -hmm. Like those little moments, those little bonds. I think there's probably something in here that is uh, relatable to just about everyone. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice way to wrap it up, actually. You said it way better than I could have. All right. Well, let's just end it there. (laughs) Okay. And our second sponsor of the episode is Park Power, your friendly local utilities provider in Alberta, offering internet, electricity, and natural gas with low rates, awesome service, and profit sharing with local charities. Winter is here, and energy usage for all Albertans will be increasing, so now is a great time for listeners to look at their utility bills and ensure they are on the best plan. Albertans have a choice who they pay their utility bills to. Park Power is happy to provide free, no-obligations quotes, and if you decide to switch providers, it's easy. You can feel good knowing you are supporting local businesses and helping to give back to our communities with your utility bills. Learn more at parkpower.ca. And what do we have coming next week, Samantha? Uh, We have a 2022 year in review. All right. So we are going to have like another kind of light episode where we talk about our picks for the best movies, TV shows, 
music and books that yes. came out in 2022, which will be hard for me because if you listen to this podcast, you know I don't <laughs> consume much media after 1978. No. But for this episode, I'll do my homework. Excellent. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. I read a lot and listen to and watch a lot more new stuff. So I'm excited to kind of share some of that with Indy so that he can learn about things that came out this year. Things came out this year? Oh, lots of things came out this year. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go find them and talk about them next week. <laughs> go get them. So Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, Crazy Kwanzaa, <laughs> have a tip-top tet, and a solemn and respectful Ramadan. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll have one episode right before the new year. That'll be when our best of episode comes out. So you can, you know, spend all New Year's Eve listening to us. Yeah, and right? then in the new year, we'll be back to our normal Monday schedule. And I will be kicking off the year with my pick. Ooh, I'm very excited. All right, I, I am too. <laughs> I have didn't not, sound like I it. I have not picked it yet. <laughs> All right. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Nailed it.